Hello, my name is Dan Rosenberg. I'm a solutions engineer with Hagerman and Company, and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make a key plan for your project. Now, today we're going to be using Revit architecture, but this can also be implemented with Revit MEP as well as Revit structure. As you'll see in my project, if I open up my overall floor plan, my floor plan is rather large, and I'm going to need to break it up into different segments in order to get uh, the eighth inch view on each sheet. So I've already gone ahead and broken this out. I've got area A on this sheet, area B on this sheet, area C, and area D. Now the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is open up our overall floor plan. I'm going to go to the applications menu and export this DWG out just so we have some vector lines to copy off of so make sure we get our proportions correct when I start building my key plane. Now what I'm going to do is go to new family and we're going to use the generic annotation family template. Open this up. Delete out the text notes. Go ahead and save this as key plan. And I'm going to go ahead and import that CAD drawing that we made. It's probably going to be very large. So I'm going to have to zoom out all the way to see this. And that's okay. All I really want to do is just use this CAD plan to trace some lines and get my uh, proportions correct. So now that I've got that, I can escape and actually just remove the imported uh, file. Now what I'm going to do is scale this down so we'll get the proper size. Zoom in. Looks like I still need to uh, shrink this down a little bit here. Again, use the scale command. Even further, and now I can. I'm zoomed in enough to kind of take a few dimensions and see roughly where I am. Now, four inches. Roughly, what I'm going to try to do here is imagine that the intersection of these reference planes represents the right corner of my title block, and I know this distance is probably about six inches and. That leaves about maybe six to eight inches over here for my key plan. So that, those are the dimensions I'm going to shoot for here. So it looks like I need to scale this down just a little more. Move that over. One more time. That's probably pretty good. So, one thing I can do is I can always scale this later, but we can go ahead and load it back into our project just to just to see. So, I'm going to load into my project area plan here, and you can see it's going to let me pick that right corner. So I actually got this pretty close. So we'll go back into the family editor. And it looks like maybe I could just nudge this over a little bit. Select so that and just use my arrow keys. Let's load it back in. Overwrite. 
that looks perfect. So now what I'm going to do is draw in a few more lines. Oops. Just to signify that our uh, division of the different spaces or areas in our plan. Now, we don't have to be perfect here. This is just diagrammatic for now. We can always come back and clean it up later. I'm going to drop in some text here. Let's uh, use a little bigger text. Rename this. Let's use maybe a quarter inch. Type in key plan. Now, one thing I like to do is check the family types, and um, we're only going to use one type, and you'll see why in a minute. We'll just call this default. And we're going to go ahead and add in a parameter for each one of the areas. We're going to make these instance parameters. Call it area, one for area D. And we're going to make them yes-no parameters. And it's an instance, yes-no. One more here for area A. Next thing we want to do is add in some hatching using a filled region. To represent each area. And it looks like this is a solid black region. I think I'm going to go with the diagonal up fill just to kind of soften it up a little bit. And now what I can do is with this filled region selected, come over here to the properties, click on this button right here then assign a parameter to it. We're going to call that area A. Now, I'm going to create a new filled region. Click Finish. Select the filled region we just created and assign this area B. And then I'll do the same thing for area C. And again for a lot of times I like to just click on something I've already created and create similar. Click on the rectangle tool. Finish. Make sure I assign it to area D. OK. And I think this looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and load this back in and overwrite it. And looks like maybe I uh, drew those lines a little too big, but that's OK. I can edit that later. So let's kind of see what we have here. When I select the symbol that we just loaded in here, um, you can now see that my key plan is listed here, and I've got instance parameters with all the areas. So I could deselect these because this is area A, and uh, all the hatch patterns will turn off except for the area that we need. Now, a couple things I can do with this once I've got it in here. Um, 
I can go to my next sheet for area B and click on annotate and go over here to symbol. And then you'll notice, again, it snaps right to the corner of my title block. And I can go ahead and uh, turn off all the different areas again. I think this was area B. There we go. And I can also copy it to my clipboard. And then go to my next sheet. Paste the line current view. Click on it. Chain, turn uh, area C back on. And so on and so forth. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you find this very useful. Thanks.